Welcome to the FCICA product promotional webinar series. We are pleased to have Elliot Gordon and Curtis Colgrove from GCP Applied Technologies with us today. Elliot, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Uh, apologize to everyone for that technical issue. Um, thank you to the entire FC FCICA team for this opportunity to present our Clavara Moisture Barriers. Uh, my name is Elliot Gordon. I am Product Marketing Manager for GCP Applied Technologies Specialty Flooring Group. And I'm joined today by Curtis Colgrove, our Technical Service Leader for our Covara Moisture Barriers. Okay, before I get into Covara, I'd like to introduce GCP Applied Technologies. GCP was acquired by Halix, uh, acquired Halix Corporation in 2016, and GCP is now the developer and the manufacturer of Covara Moisture Barriers. GCP Applied Technologies is inspired to influence how the, the way the world is built. We're a global company. We're serving customers in 100 countries, and we have global product expertise covering a range of different construction product areas. GCP Applied Technologies is split into two different units. We have our specialty construction chemicals, which are chemicals that are used in our in concrete mixes across the world. They provide strength and durability to concrete that goes into buildings uh, some, some of the largest buildings in the world. And then we also have our specialty building materials, which are used for waterproofing, for air barriers, for uh, commercial buildings, as well as residential buildings. We provide our monocoat product for fire protection. We also have specialty products, and of course, our flooring business, which includes our Orcon tapes and tools, additional steam tape products, and what I'm going to be talking about today, our Covara flooring underlayment. Some of you may know Covara Moisture Barriers as VersaShield, and you may have heard also that VersaShield has been rebranded as Covara. And we always like to make clear whenever we talk about Covara that it's the same product, but with a new name. And with Covara, GCP is excited to be presenting a portfolio of moisture mitigation products for flooring. While VersaShield was a product, was a single product that we offered for moisture mitigation, we're excited with Covara for the opportunity to expand into new areas and to bring new technologies for moisture mitigation to the market. As I mentioned, there have been no changes to the existing VersaShield products. We're offering the exact same product, but we've simply changed their name. Previously, what were VersaShield 95 and VersaShield MBX are now Covara 95 and Covara MBX. The same exact products, just with a new name. And at GCP, we are a leading construction product and technology company. And we have a strong research and development team, and we're always looking for new ways to advance technologies to solve flooring moisture issues. And with our newly rebranded Clavara line of moisture mitigation products, we're looking forward to continuing to advance that technology and continuing to bring new products to the market that make it quicker and easier for contractors to mitigate moisture mitigation, to mitigate moisture in your flooring. So a little bit of background about Covara Moisture Barriers. Covara Moisture Barriers were the first prefabricated moisture barriers on the market. We have more than 10 years of experience with protecting flooring against moisture and alkalinity with our Covara Moisture Barriers. And what that means is that more than 60 million square feet of Covara Moisture Barriers have been installed underneath a wide range of different uh, types and brands of flooring in also a wide range of different types of, of applications, anywhere from commercial retail, retail stores to healthcare facilities and hospitals. We've been, uh, we've been installed in schools, both uh, K through 12, as well as universities. We've been used in high-tech companies, server rooms. We've been used in large office buildings, really any end use application Covara moisture barriers have been used over the past 10 years. And as I mentioned, we're continuing to push new boundaries. Um, particularly today, I'll be talking about the upcoming introduction of our new Covara Advanced Bond product. And we're always looking for new ways to really advance flooring protection and create new and innovative ways to protect flooring against moisture and alkalinity. So what are the benefits of using sheet membranes for moisture mitigation? 
First and foremost, sheet membranes allow contractors like yourselves to mitigate against moisture and alkalinity up to 50% faster than epoxy moisture mitigation products. This means, first of all, less of an impact on your own customer's timeline. So if you have a customer who wants to renovate their flooring in a day or two, this gives you the opportunity to be able to do that when you have moisture issues. But also it gives you an opportunity to get in and out and onto your next job quickly. Unlike with epoxy moisture barriers, we don't require any shot blasting, so there's no need for the equipment, no need for the noise, and particularly no need for all that dirt that comes with it. Sheet membranes for moisture mitigation don't require self-leveler. Um, as long as the floor is flat, then the sheet membrane can go right over the concrete subfloor, and the flooring can be installed right on top of that. And so again, you're saving time by using a sheet membrane because you don't need to spend all that time mixing, applying, and providing time for the self-leveler to cure. One great thing that we like to talk about with sheet membranes is that they're prefabricated. First of all, that means it's a very easy application. It's very easy on installers to put in. It's a very simple product for installers. But it also means that it's very consistent, which means that every time you put down a Covara moisture barrier, you know exactly what you're getting. You know that you're getting a consistent product that is going to be able to protect against moisture and alkalinity every time you use it. And one last real benefit of sheet membranes for moisture mitigation over other types of moisture mitigation is that they can be installed over existing flooring. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it's a real benefit when an end user or a contractor doesn't want to remove flooring that already exists on a project. This gives them the opportunity to, uh, to, to, to replace that flooring quickly just by going over it with Covara moisture barriers and then installing the new flooring on top of that. So those were a few benefits about rolled moisture barriers and sheet membranes in general. Covara moisture barriers, here are some of the benefits of these products. First of all, Covara moisture barriers are dimensionally stable and they lie flat on the floor. When you roll them out, when you kick them out onto the floor, they, they, they roll out extremely flat, which means you don't have to worry about any bumps or buckling or about any curling of the membrane as you're trying to install the flooring on top of that. Covara moisture barriers are resistant to heavy rolling loads. Uh, that's both with our new self-adhered products that I'll be talking about, um, or with our current Covar MDX and Covar 95 products with the application of a box grid tape system that prevents any movement or any buckling of the Covara moisture barrier underneath rolling loads or heavy foot traffic. Covara moisture barriers provide complete protection at the seams. We have seam tape that's used to cover the seams and prevent any moisture and alkalinity from emerging from the seams, which is the most volatile area where moisture and alkalinity can uh, come up from underneath from the subfloor. For our Covara MBX moisture barriers, we provide protection at the extreme moisture levels, up to 99.5% relative humidity, with both the bottom seam tape as well as the top seam, seam tape. And with our Covara 95 moisture barriers, up to 95% relative humidity, we provide protection with a top seam tape, which is able to prevent moisture from emerging from the slab up to 95%. Covara moisture barriers are made with inert materials, which means that they will have no interaction with or contamination of the substrate or of the floor covering. We don't require any primer prior to installing Covara moisture barriers, and that goes both for our Covara uh, MBX and Covara 95 systems, as well as our upcoming Covara Advanced Bond products. We offer a 10-year limited replacement warranty. And finally, we provide support with GCP's special, Specialty Flooring Technical Services Group. We have a nationwide technical services team that will support you on training, on troubleshooting, and on any unique installations. Just when you have any questions, they're a highly responsive group, and they're able to support you and to help out whenever you have any questions and any issues when you're installing Covara moisture barriers. We offer two products currently of Covara moisture barriers. Covara 95 is our gray product, 
And that can be used up to 95% relative humidity. And then we offer Covara MBX Moisture Barrier, and that's our blue product. And that product can be used up to 99.5% relative humidity. These products come in rolls. They're, the rolls are five feet wide by 144 feet long, so a total of 720 square feet per roll. They weigh anywhere between 80 to 90 pounds, uh, 80 pounds for the Covara 95 moisture barrier, 90, 90 pounds for the Covara MBX moisture barrier. It has a permeance of less than 0.1 perms, can be used up to a pH of 12, and our Covara moisture barriers are resistant to fold, to mold and fungi and have zero VOCs. Now I'm going to go a little bit through the installation process for Covara 95 and Covara MBX moisture barriers. As in any situation with flooring, the first thing, of course, that you have to do when installing Covara 95 and Covara MBX moisture barriers is moisture testing. So we require RH in situ probe testing according to ASTM S2170. Uh, according to that standard, you have to do three tests for the first thousand square feet of flooring, and then one additional test per uh, each additional 1,000 square feet. To do this test, a hole is drilled into the slab up to 40% of the thickness of the slab. A sleeve is put into that hole and then capped up and just needs to acclimate for 24 hours according to the latest standard. And then uh, once it's had a chance to acclimate, you can use a digital moisture meter to read the RH level of the slab at that time. You can't do that moisture testing uh, any less than 28 days after the slab is poured, and of course the slab must be enclosed and the HVAC must be operating before that testing is done. All right, once the moisture testing is done and you've determined whether it's a slab that will need Covara 95 or Covara MBX moisture barrier, then we get to the installation. We require acclimation of all materials uh, according to the manufacturer factor recommendations prior to installation. So if a manufacturer recommends 48 or 72 hours, we require that both our Kavara moisture barriers as well as any of the other materials, the adhesive or the finished flooring, has had an opportunity to acclimate for that time. And for Kavara moisture barriers, we require a smooth, dry, clean, and structurally sound slab. So any existing adhesive must be removed either by, must be removed by mechanical means uh, it must be swept and the, the slab must be uh, clean prior to installing Covara moisture barriers. Any cracks, grooves, or depressions uh, and joints that are greater than an eighth of an inch must be filled in with moisture-resistant patch, uh, but any crack less than an eighth of an inch can be left as is prior to the installation of Covara moisture barriers. So once the slab is prepared, uh, then it's time to go ahead and install the Covara Moisture Barrier. For Covara MBX, which is used at the highest levels of moisture, up to 99.5% relative humidity, we require the use of Covara double-sided tape every five feet. And the way that this is done is we recommend measuring out four feet and 10 inches away from the first wall where, where you'll be beginning to install the Covara Moisture Barrier, uh, creating a chalk line, and then laying out the double-sided tape along the edge so that the edge of the double-sided tape closest to the wall is right along that chalk line, and the center of the double-sided tape is five feet away from the first wall. And then you go ahead and you create additional chalk lines every five feet from that first line, and you continue to install the double-sided tape in that same way, putting the edge of the double-sided tape up against each of those chalk lines. But once you place the double-sided tape on the floor, you do not remove the release liner at this point. We will show you when you remove the, the release liner once the Kovar MBX has actually been laid down on the floor. For Kovar 95, unless you're doing a box grid installation, you don't require the use of the double-sided seam tape. Once the double-sided seam tape is installed for Kovar MBX, or in the case of Kovar 95, right when the slab is prepared, you roll out the membrane the smooth side down. And so if you look at the Covara membrane for the MBX, there's a blue top, and then there's a marbly 
plastic bottom, that's the smooth side. So that's the part that goes down. Uh, and for Kovara 95, there's a gray rough top, and then there's the smooth plasticky bottom. And the plasticky side, that's the part that goes down on the floor. And the Kovara membrane is installed in 30 foot, lin in 30 foot linear cuts. So although the rolls are 144 feet long, uh, we require that the membrane is cut down to 30 linear feet uh, during the installation. That helps to make the installation easier. It allows the installer to actually be able to manage each of the individual pieces as they're completing the installation. And when installing the Kovara moisture barrier, both for Kovara MBX as well as for Kovara 95, we require that you never overlap seams to prevent any telegraphing. If the seams are overlapped, that creates an opportunity that you may see those bumps through the floor. And so we require that you simply butt up the edges of the membrane against each other. And then once the Kovara moisture barrier has been rolled out, we get to the steaming step. For Kovara MBX, as I mentioned, since we had that double-sided tape down on the floor, this is the point at which you would remove the release liner from the double-sided tape. And if you look at the picture on the top right, you can see how an installer might do that. Uh, you simply begin pulling the release liner at the edge of the membrane, and then you, be and then you continue to remove the release liner uh, between the seams of the membrane. And as you're removing the release liner, you set the membrane into that double-sided tape. And then for both Kovara MBX as well as for Kovara 95, you apply top seam tape across all side and cross seams. For Kovara MBX, we have our blue seam tape which is for, meant for the highest levels of relative humidity. And for Kovara 95, we have our gray seam tape that goes up to relative humidity of 95%. And then you roll all those seams with a hand roller to make sure that they're fully bonded to that membrane and that you've created a nice tight seam where moisture and alkalinity can't escape. All right, and then after that, once the Kovara is installed, it's time to install the finished flooring. So you apply adhesive directly to the membrane according to the manufacturer's specifications for a non-porous substrate. And it's important when doing the installation to be careful not to cut, damage, or puncture the Kovara MBX or Kovara 95 membrane. This means when doing any wood flooring installations, it's important that, uh, that you do only adhere glued down wood flooring and that you're not nailing any wood flooring uh, through the membrane. Any holes in the membrane, of course, leave open the opportunity for any moisture to escape. So we want to make sure that we don't cause any damage to the membrane when doing the flooring installation. Once the adhesive is laid down, you just have to give that adhesive time to get tacky if necessary, and then install the, uh, the, the finished flooring right on top of that. And then there are several specialty installations that uh, we like to talk about with customers who are considering using Kovara moisture barriers. One specialty installation is the use of wet set adhesives, particularly when using them with, when installing sheet goods. Uh, any wet set adhesives, um, as, as I mentioned a moment ago, we're installing these over a non-porous substrate. And so we require the installation of a skim coat that's used as a blotter layer to help support the curing of the adhesive once the finished flooring is installed on top of that. When installing Kovara moisture barriers, both Kovara 95 and Kovara MBX, over existing resilient flooring, uh, it's just important to make sure that the flooring is completely intact, that there's no cracking, and that there's no damage to the resilient flooring that's being, um, that's underneath the Kovara moisture barrier that's being installed. And then we have situations where you might expect any rolling loads um, or where you're using any dimensionally sensitive flooring on top of Kovara moisture barrier. In these situations, we recommend, we, we require the use of a box grid of double-sided tape to adhere the membrane to the subfloor. In situations where you're only expecting light and very infrequent rolling loads or very light foot traffic, we recommend using a five foot by five foot box grid of tape uh, installed on the flooring beneath the Kovara moisture barrier. And in situations where you're expecting moderate to heavy rolling loads and moderate to heavy foot traffic, we require a two and a half by two and a half box grid of tape to be installed. Once the tape is laid down and the Kovara moisture barrier is laid on top of it, 
the moisture barrier is pulled back to expose the tape, the release liner is pulled off of the tape to expose that adhesive, and then the Covara moisture barrier is rolled right back into place. And this really creates a tight adhesive bond with the substrate so that the Covara moisture barriers don't move, they don't cause any shifting or buckling underneath the, the heavy rolling loads or heavy foot traffic. At any point, if you have any questions about these types of specialty installations um, or any additional projects where you just might need more information or more support, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, we have an excellent GCP technical services team made up of uh, a bunch of flooring specialists who are there to help out, who are there to answer any questions, provide additional information, and provide any job-specific warranties or help with any specialty installations. So I just want to talk about uh, two projects that we're particularly proud of that really demonstrate the benefit that Covar moisture barriers provide to, uh, to you, the contractor, but also to any of the other stakeholders who might be on your project, whether that's the general contractor um, or an architect or the end user who owns the building. So one case I'd like to talk about is the TripAdvisor headquarters. This is a project that's in Needham, Massachusetts. It was a new 200,000 square foot office building, and the general contractor was running into delays in timeline due to weather, uh, as well as due to delayed HVAC installation. And when the flooring contractor came onto the job and began doing testing for moisture levels, they determined that the moisture levels were too high to install the finished floor covering. And the flooring contractor had a discussion with the general contractor and also had a discussion with the end user, with TripAdvisor, and they decided to use Covar 95 and Covar MDX on this project. They didn't want to delay the timeline anymore by using any, Covar, by using any epoxy moisture barriers, um, but they knew also that they really needed the moisture protection um, necessary to protect their flooring for, uh, for the years to come. For the flooring contractor, they didn't have to bring in any epoxy subcontractor. So since it's such an easy installation, they were able to use their existing installation team to come in and to install the Covara moisture barrier. In addition, the great thing about this for the flooring contractor was that they were able to do multiple installations simultaneously. So while they had some of their installers doing uh, Covara installation on some floors, they were doing Covara installation on other floors. And as they were going along doing the Covara installation, they were able to get right on top of that. And once the Covara moisture barrier was uh, laid out and was themed, the next group of installers were able to come in right away and begin installing the finished flooring. So on this project, we're able to save the project over $500,000 in savings on the installation costs versus what it would have cost them to come in, to shop blast, to do an epoxy mitigation, to do the self-leveling on top of that, to allow time for it to cure, and then to install the finished flooring on top of that. Another recent project that we were involved in is the UCLA Poly Pavilion. Pavilion. So this is UCLA's main arena, uh, and this is where their basketball team and hockey team play. It's a 28,000 square foot sports floor. It was rebuilt, it was completely renovated back, I think in about 2012. Uh, and then two years ago, unfortunately, there was a water main break right next door, and the arena was completely flooded in eight to 10 inches of water. Uh, of course, as you can tell from the picture, this wasn't a good situation for their wood flooring, and they had to completely replace their entire wood sports floor. Uh, to add uh, insult to injury, they also were facing the upcoming start of their basketball season. Um, and they only had about a month to completely replace the flooring in time for the Bruins season to begin. So Covara MBX Moisture Barrier was selected because it offered not only moisture and alkalinity protection up to extremely high levels of relative humidity, up to 99.5% relative humidity, but also it offered that quick installation and no cure time. So the flooring contractor was able to do the full project, including the installation, the sanding, the painting, all of that in four weeks, and they were able to finish it just in time for the Bruins home opener. So it was a good, a feel-good story uh, for GCP, a feel-good story for the flooring contractor, and definitely a feel-good story for UCLA. We're able to get up and running in time for um, their exciting basketball season. So 
now that I've spoken a little bit about Covara 95 and Covara MBX moisture barriers, I'm very excited to, uh, to introduce our Covara AB200 and Covara AB300 moisture barriers. And these are new products that GCP Applied Technologies is currently developing, and we're beginning to roll these out to the market. You'll begin to see them in a very limited quantity coming out to the market over the next few months, um, but hopefully over the course of the next few months, you'll have an opportunity to get your hands on it and hopefully have a chance to trial it out and uh, use it on one of your projects. So Covara AB200 and Covara AB300, they offer the same Covara membrane, membrane construction as our Covara 95 and Covara MBX moisture barriers. So our Covara AB200 moisture barriers is our gray advanced fund moisture barrier, which, goes, which can be used up to a relative humidity of 95%. And our Covara AB300 moisture barrier is our blue uh, advanced on moisture barrier that can be used up to a relative humidity of 99.5% relative humidity. And these moisture barriers offer our advanced bond technology. What this means is that on the underside of the membrane, we've applied uh, moisture and alkalinity resistant adhesive dots. And these are very resilient, this is a very resilient adhesive, completely uh, uh, resistant to moisture and alkalinity. And these adhesive dots allow the Covara moisture barrier to provide best-in-class adhesion to the substrate. And we've also added a split release liner on top of that adhesive, which means that we offer easy peel and stick adhesion to the substrate. It makes for a very quick and very easy installation to the substrate. Covara AB200 and Covara AB300 are ideal for heavy traffic and for rolling loads. And uh, it's a very exciting new technology, and that means that we have a patent pending on the technology. So Covara AB200 and Covara AB300 moisture barriers are ideal for heavy traffic and for heavy rolling loads. Because they adhere to the floor, they provide protection against buckling and, sh and shifting without needing to use all of that box grid tape that we previously recommended for Covara 95 and Covara MDX moisture barriers. It could be installed in a fraction of the time of epoxy-based moisture barriers. You already saw how I've demonstrated how quickly Covara 95 and Covara MBX moisture barriers can be installed. And Covara AB200 and Covara AB300 moisture barriers can be installed just as quickly. Just like our Covara 95 and Covara MBX moisture barriers, we don't require any shot blasting and self-leveling is only required for uneven floors. And we continue to back these products with our 10-year limited warranty. Substrate preparation is essentially the same as it is with our Covara 95 and Covara MVX moisture barriers. You require a smooth, dry, clean, and structurally sound slab prior to installation of these moisture barriers. And any cracks, grooves, or depressions and joints that are greater than an eighth of an inch must be filled and smoothed with moisture-resistant patch. For Covara AB300, we do continue to require the application of Covara double-sided tape at the seams. That's because we really want to make sure that we're protecting the seams against any moisture and alkalinity that are emerging from the slab up to that 99.5% relative humidity level. But as I mentioned, even though we require that double-sided tape at the seams, we do not require that box grid of tape installation because we already have that adhesive applied to the underside of our Covara AB200 and AB300 moisture barriers. For the application of the membrane itself, the membrane is rolled out with the release liner down, um, and you do not remove the release liner when you're rolling out the moisture barrier. The first thing that you do is just roll it out and make sure you have everything in place first. Um, and as with our other Covara moisture barriers, we require that it's rolled out at a maximum of 30 linear foot cuts. Then for Covara AB300 only, um, since we've put down the double-sided tape at the seams, we anchor the Covara AB300 to that double-sided tape, same way that we do with Covara MBX, by removing the release liner of that double-sided tape between the seams and laying the Covara AB300 down into that double-sided tape, into that adhesive. And then the Covara AB200 or Covara AB300 membrane is folded back. The release liner is removed, which is what you could see in this picture. And then it's carefully rolled back into place. And it needs to be rolled back carefully, so we don't rec we recommend that you not flop it down um, because you don't want to get any buckles, any bumps in the membrane when you're installing it. But 
because of the fiberglass backbone of the membrane, it goes back into place very easily, very quickly, and remains very flat on the floor when you're moving it uh, and doing the final adhesive installation. And then, just as with our other Covara moisture barriers, uh, the last step in this process is the seaming. So Covara AB300, um, once the double-sided seam tape is, uh, once that release film is removed and it's fully adhered to the floor, then for both the MBX and the Covara 95 seam tape, you apply the top seam tape across all the side and cross seams. And as with our other Covara moisture barriers, you roll the seams with a hand roller. And then once that process is complete, the flooring installation continues just as it does with our other Covara moisture barriers. So the adhesive is applied according to the manufacturer's instructions for a non-porous substrate, and the flooring is applied on top of that. Just want to go through a case study of a recent project that we did in a medical office building. This was a thousand square foot basement medical space, and the moisture levels were reading at 99% relative humidity. There were very small examination rooms in the space and narrow corridors, which made shot blasting extremely complex to come in and do. And applying an epoxy would have really increased the total amount of time, both from the shot blasting as well as waiting for the epoxy to cure and doing the self-leveling underlayment on top of that. The owner of the office building really needed a quick turnaround in order to reopen the medical office. Uh, they didn't want to lose any time that they could spend seeing their patients. So we were able to apply our Covara AB300 moisture barrier. We installed sheet vinyl flooring on top of that. And the entire installation was done in just two days. So it, is, it was an extremely quick moisture mitigation product project under our sheet vinyl flooring. So I've now had a chance to talk to you about three different products. We have, uh, sorry, four different products. We have our Covara 95 and Covara MBX moisture barriers, and our Covara AB200 and Covara AB300 moisture barriers. So the question becomes, well, which is the right product for your project? When you're looking at relative humidity is up to 95%, that's where our Covara 95 and Covara AB200 moisture barriers come into place. When you're not experiencing any rolling loads, you just might have light foot traffic, uh, we recommend using our Covara 95 moisture barriers. Covara 95 is also a great uh, product to use if you're working with a customer who might expect that they're going to be replacing their flooring very frequently because it makes it very easy to come in and do demolition on the flooring. But in situations where you might be expecting some moderate to heavy rolling loads or foot traffic, um, that's when we recommend using the self-adhered product, the Covara AB200 moisture barrier. And then when you're looking at situations where the relative humidity is going up to 99.5%, then that's where we would use the Covara MBX or the Covara AB300 moisture barriers. And again, similar to with Covara 95 and Covara AB200, with these two products, if you're not expecting any rolling loads or just light foot traffic, we recommend using our Covara MBX moisture barrier. But any situations where you're expecting moderate to heavy rolling loads or heavy foot traffic, that's when we recommend using our Covara AB300 moisture barrier. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Covara AB200 and Covara AB300 are still definitely in their infancy. Um, and so we're working, uh, our technical services team is working with every one of our customers who use, who's using that new product. Um, providing the technical support that they need to make sure that they can have a successful installation. So that brings me towards the end of my presentation about our Covara moisture barriers. If you're interested in learning anything else about our Covara moisture barriers, we have all of the installation on gcpat.com. So when you go to gcpat.com, simply click on the search bar at the top of the page and type in Covara. That's where you'll be able to find all of the technical data sheets, installation instructions, safety data sheets, guide specifications, and warranty information. And if you're looking uh, for your local Covara moisture barrier sales contact, you can just go to our Contact Us link, look up your contact, your local contact in the specialty flooring group, and give them a call. I can assure you that they'd be very happy to help you out. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you again to Lizzie and FCICA for uh, providing us this opportunity to present our Covara moisture barriers. Um, if you have any questions about our products, here are um, our email addresses for me and for Curtis, and we'd be happy to take any questions that you might have right now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, 
And of course, FCSEA would like to thank TCP Applied Technologies for sponsoring today's webinar. And thank you so much to Elias and Curtis for presenting it. Um, Curtis should be jumping on to help answer questions, so you will hear him today. Um, just to let everyone know, all registered attendees will receive a copy of the presentation along with a link to the recording once it's available. The recording will also be available on the FCICA website and YouTube channel. Are there any questions? You can post them in the question box here on the webinar panel or in the chat box and we can read those out for you. I do have a couple of questions here. So Elliot and Curtis, can you install Covera over a patched floor? So I'm going to leave that to Curtis to answer, since Curtis is our technical specialist. Curtis, are you there on the line? We can't hear you right now. Okay, so while we're waiting for Curtis to jump back on, I'm happy to provide my own uh, answer to that question based on my knowledge of the product. Um, if Curtis does jump back on, uh, unfortunately we're having some uh, audio issues, um, he can probably provide a little bit more of a technical answer to this. But um, the answer is, is yes, we do allow the installation of Covara moisture barriers over patched floors. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we require any um, cracks, grooves, um, any other issue with the concrete subfloor greater than one eighth of an inch to be filled in with moisture resistant patch. Uh, so it does specifically have to be a moisture resistant patch um, since it is going down underneath the Covara moisture barrier. And then once that patch is installed and it's smoothed out, um, once it has an opportunity to cure, then the Covara moisture barrier can be installed on top of that. Excellent. Thank you, Elliot. Curtis, we're still unable to hear you, um, so why don't you try calling back in? And uh, we'll see if we can get you back on here. Um, Elliot, let's see if you can answer um, this next question here. Are you able to install Covera with a spray adhesive? So, yes, the, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, there are specific um, installation requirements for that type of uh, application. And I will have to defer over to Curtis once he's had an opportunity to call back in uh, to give a little bit more detail about how uh, any installation is done with Covara and a spray adhesive. Okay. It looks like Curtis is working on that right now. Oh, can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. You must be breaking up a bit. Oh. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you fine. What was the question? The question was, um, well, the first one was, can you install over a patched floor? And Elliot gave a little right. bit of info, but wanted you to expand on that. And then the second question was, can you use a spray adhesive? Uh, the first one, I was able to hear Elliot. He gave a good explanation of or answer that, yes, you can go over a patch floor. Um, if the floor is greater than a quarter inch, then, um, you know, <laughs> we hope it's a moisture resistant patch. If someone is patching the floor, if it wasn't patched and they were going to patch it, then obviously we want a moisture resistant patch, anything a quarter inch and above. Um, spray adhesives. When using spray adhesives, uh, we like a single pass skim coat due to the textured mineral top coat of the Covara AB, you know, 200 and 300 and the 95 and MBX. Since it has a textured top coat, we like a single pass skim coat to give it a smooth, flat surface. And when using your spray adhesive, your coverage is going to be a little heavier than normal. But yes, it can be done. Excellent, thank you. Um, looks like we've got another question here. Um, can Covera be installed over a radiant heated floor? 
Yes, it can. And just like most manufacturers, uh, they're going to tell you, go, you know, no greater than 85 degrees. With, same with our product. The same thing applies. Okay. Is there anything else that you two would like to address about the product? Anything that you think our attendees should know about? Um, you know, generally, uh, it, like I like since I come from the installation background, um, when installing our product, one of the, the main things is to kind of treat it like sheet vinyl uh, when installing because you don't want to have any kind of air entrapment. Uh, you know, once you have that, then you can have bubbles in the material. Uh, then when you install your finished flooring, those bubbles will move around under the system. And hence, then you'll have tiles that may be popping up, carpet tiles, vinyl plank, or sheet goods with bubbles. That's why I always tell the installers, treat it as though you're working with sheet goods. Um, you'll have a great successful installation if you do that. That sounds like some really good advice. So we don't have any more questions here. Um, we do have another 10 minutes, but I think we will wrap up early and let people get to lunch or back to work or wherever they're heading. Um, so really quick here, just another reminder for the SIMS. Um, those of you who attended the webinar live, your CEUs will be added to your account. And if any watch the recording later, you need to submit the CEU form, which is available on the SIM pages of the FCICA website. If you're looking for other continuing education opportunities, you can access previous webinars on FCICA's YouTube channel and Member Center, and we do have a new training resources page for other offerings. And if you are interested in sponsoring an FCICA promotional or educational webinar, um, you can contact me at my email, elizabeth at fcica.com, or call the office at 248-661-5015. Again, thank you so much to GCP Applied Technologies and Elliot and Curtis. We had a great webinar, and I hope that you guys can um, join us again with more information about your product, and we hope to see you at the next event. Thanks so much for joining, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, Lizzie.